This week on Garage Land, we're talking to Winnipeg-based singer-songwriter Greg McPherson. Born in Sydney, Nova Scotia, McPherson has built up a loyal fan base across Canada thanks to a fierce dedication to his craft and a series of solid full-length releases. Having previously worked with the now-defunct G7 Welcoming Committee label, his latest full-length, Mr. Invitation, marks his first time with Winnipeg staple Small Man Records, which will make the record its final release as it folds this year. You've said that Mr. Invitation is the first record that you've actually been truly happy with the whole way along. I didn't have the knowledge that maybe I wish I would have in uh, previous attempts. Um, so I've learned a lot about recording techniques and about you know creating a really positive vibe in the studio. When you say positive vibe, do you mean like a lot of rain sticks and like incense and yeah. you know meditation? In my mind, I just think of Rick Rubin carpets. Yeah, there's a lot of a lot of weed and. Uh, <laughs> Uh, we had a masseuse on session as well, which is always very yeah. important. Crucial. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 Absolutely. People forget about the masseuse, and it's like, well, you, no it's wonder your record thing. sucks. No, no. I was yeah. like, you know, I went, uh, I went down the list: masseuse, you know, drummer. You know what I mean? That's the order. <laughs> yeah. Studio. Totally. You know, yeah. masseuse first. You got to pick out the right person Good. for the job. I feel like singer-songwriters often get stuck in this weird world where if you're a band, people will write about you and say, you know, oh, this record kind of sounds like Silkworm meets Jawbox or something like that. When you're a singer-songwriter, you are constantly being compared to the greatest artists of a generation. It's like, oh, this record's kind of like Bob Dylan. And you're like, yeah. wow, that's, that's a lot heavier than this record sounds like no effects. It's something that I find frustrating at times. It's an honor, you know, but I think it's inevitable if you're a white guy with an electric guitar to be compared to Bruce Springsteen or, uh, you know, Elvis Costello or whoever, right? If, for example, someone in my band says, well, that song sounds a lot like so-and-so or something that means something to me, then it's, that's, a, that's a pretty powerful compliment, you know? Or an insult if they tell me I sound like the Bare Naked Ladies or something. No offense to the Bare Naked Ladies, who's a fantastic local band. Yeah, mm -hmm. and, and also some of our prime viewership, right. the members of the Bare Naked Ladies. Yeah, I should be careful with that stuff. I mean, I like the Bare I mean, he used to be a fan of the Bare Naked Ladies back in 1993. <laughs> I think the Bare Naked Ladies used to be fans of the Bare Naked Ladies right, in 1993. Yeah, yeah. One time I was on the streets of Ottawa. We just walked out of our venue that we were playing that night, and uh, I saw a Danko Jones poster. And I looked at him like, fuck. Oh, sorry, I sw just swore there. No, it's fine. Okay. I, I looked at the poster and I was like, man, Danko Jones sucks. <laughs> And I looked over, like, and literally, it was just like this. It was as if Danko Jones walked by and saw a Greg McPherson poster and said, Dank, you know, Greg McPherson sucks, because Danko Jones was on camera with someone with a microphone in his face and it totally picked up. <laughs> I walked by and I'm like, man, Danko Jones sucks. And I looked over and Danko Jones was looking me right in the face, just going like this, you know? It was pretty spectacular. I'm going 